Hello and happy Sabbath and welcome to the last Sabbath in November. I hope you are well. And uh, let's, let's get over here to dun, 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 dun. our lesson for today. Hope you had a very happy Thanksgiving, very blessed Thanksgiving. It was a wonderful time, yes. Lots of yummy food and family. And uh, although it was kind of small, we had a Zoom session. I'm sure many of you did too. And this this psalm, this verse takes on a greater sense, a greater meaning, giving thanks to the Lord and proclaim his greatness, letting the whole world know what he has done. Pretty amazing. Now, as we're getting set for Christmas now, looking at some different devotional plans that I've started or looked at, and I'm sure you all have a devotional plan you are going to be doing or already have that, but lots of ideas. I like these. And then this one, a nice family, six-day family Advent devotional. That looks that looks like a lot of fun, too. Just looking forward to this beautiful holiday season of thankfulness and remembering Jesus and everything he's done. So next week, we're kind of splitting this into two weeks because of the holiday, because uh, I definitely want to get a few more people uh, in to finish this last part of the book, To Know God. So that's what we'll do next week. We'll finish out the book. And then uh, for December, these adventures, the Advent of looking forward, uh, looking back to when Jesus came the first time, anticipating when he comes the next time. And if you want to join in any of this, because I'm sure you got a lot of stories or pictures or things about Christmas, just contact me and we can get you in there and we'll... Uh, We'll have some fun having Christmas memories and stuff like that, okay? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, dear Lord, I want to thank you for the, the blessings of the holidays. It gives us time to pause and really focus and remember you. You've done this this whole year, I think. Hit the pause button so that we can have our eyes open to see what's really important. And so thank you for that. Thank you for your love, your patience, for being with all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Certainly a lot to be praying for. Uh, as you know, every, every day something's happening uh, with family or friends and stuff. So a lot to pray for. And uh, just be out there, be in there, be praying for somebody. So let's, we're only going to cover a couple pages today because the ending is pretty profound. And so we start near the end, page 134. Knowing God, this is life eternal. And this is the theme text for this whole book in John 17, 3. This is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. But at the top of 135, there's this startling thing from Revelation, or from Matthew, actually, in Matthew, um, where the people are saying, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and cast out demons? So they've been doing these miracles, doing all these works. And then Jesus will say to them, I never knew you. Then he says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. So we got people working both wonders of God and iniquity. This might very well characterize the Laodicean church at the end of time. And that's what these next few pages really discuss is that those verses from Revelation that Jesus is speaking to the churches, and specifically we're looking at Laodicea. In these scriptures, we can see there will be only two classes, and here he kind of ends up this thing um, 
about Laodicea. There's only two classes at the very end, those who know God and those who don't, the hot, the cold. There is no middle ground anymore. But in Revelation 3 there, what the last day church, the Laodicean church is known for is being lukewarm. So we, we have to say at least the majority of people are lukewarm because that's what we are known as in the last days. Something happens so. So what is lukewarm? There on page 136, kind of discusses that. So the majority of the church is lukewarm, but something kind of happens at the end and there's the, Jesus admonishes us. He gives us counsel. So in Revelation 3, he gives counsel to the church of Laodicea to do things. Buy from him gold refined in the fire. Taking a robe buying ISAB, all of these things have meaning. And uh, here he goes on to describe more of Laodicea and looking good on the outside, but having uh, doing, uh, doing the right things for the wrong reasons, for the wrong motivation. So the majority of the people in the church up until shortly before Jesus comes back he says are externalists they want to put on the good christian image but inside they are not quite where they need to be they don't have the righteousness of jesus covering them i think that's a good description it's an accurate description for sure so they do not know god yet but try to live as his children. This is, I think, a key statement here. They do not know God, know him personally and intimately, yet they're trying to live as his children. So Jesus gives this, this uh, counsel here. He's, he's telling them they're pitiful and poor and they're wretched and miserable, and blind and naked, all of these things. And then he tells them, um, he gives them the counsel to buy from him the gold refined in the fire and stuff. But look at this at the bottom there. What happens to this large group of lukewarm people right before Jesus comes back? They disappear. And where do they go? They either go hot or cold. So there's no middle ground when Jesus comes back. And think of this, any time there's been reformation, you can look back at the reformation of the church in the medieval times, and when light came, it was a very polarizing instrument. People either accepted it or they rejected it, sometimes violently rejecting it, sometimes cruelly rejecting it. There's no middle ground. So... This counsel from Jesus towards the end causes this polarization. Remember, all of these characteristics, all these things are happening are in the church. This is not the world at large, but the church itself. So, and this, I, I certainly believe one of the advantages of many, as many people have said in this year, when we've been able to have a lot of activities and external things taken away because of the uh, pandemic. It has given us time to reflect and consider these things and to study things like this that are so important. So, with the season change, with the fall, winter approaching, we can see the signs of the times as, as time marches on. And one day we will meet on the shore, the beautiful shore up there. We'll cross the river. We'll see the river of life. But the time is getting late. The sun is setting. There is work to be done. 
There's a mission to perform. And there's a savior to know and to share and to just be thankful for him and all that he's done. Because in the end, that's all we will have. It's just our relationship with Jesus. So I pray that as we are finishing this book, you have found it a blessing that you've been able to set aside that time every morning to spend time with Jesus to deepen and strengthen your relationship with him. So let's pray. Father, again, I want to thank you for this time and spirit of thanksgiving that we can build within us a character that thanks you in all circumstances. To trust you in all things and to draw closer to you. That is our prayer. That is our hope. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you. God bless you. Let's get together next week in December and finish up this book. And again, I hope it's been a tremendous blessing to you to know God. See you later. Okay, bye-bye.